Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part two on this bumper bar scratch repair. Now part one went right through the repair and primer stage. We then got the edge masking done and now we've got it into the spray booth and we're going to be getting some colour on it. Later on in the video we'll do the polishing of the blend and all that kind of stuff. So uh, as I said in the previous video, this was sort of aimed towards somebody who's just uh, not really a spray painter. Might be a little bit handy with the tool and you wanted to give uh, this kind of a job a shot without having to take it to a body shop and yeah hopefully we'll be able to give you guys the uh, information that you need to be able to carry out these kind of repairs yourself um, so there's obviously I'm in a spray booth there's nothing to say that you couldn't do this in your garage I've been thinking about it and I would be able to do it in my garage with the know-how that I've got I don't think it would cost me too much to get the tools and equipment. Obviously, I've got a lot of the tools already. Um, the main thing I would need to do is buy some of the consumables, like some masking tape and all that, um, masking plastic, the paint itself, but I'd be able to get some from work off the bus, no dramas at all. Um, but there will be a list down below in the description of this video, and I may even put the same list at the end of the video so that you can get yourself a bit of a shopping list. Um, obviously, a few of the methods could be changed slightly a bit of ingenuity and uh, yeah you'd be able to say swap out masking plastic for um, even a sheet I guess you could get an old bed sheet throw that over the car use some um, masking uh, paper or so, sorry some newspaper instead of masking paper and uh, get your masking done that way uh, these rags that you see me using you could just use uh, just a standard bleached white cotton cloth um, that would be fine. I would definitely recommend getting yourself a box of tack cloths though or else you're going to get junk and crap all through your paintwork. Although if you're doing it in your garage there's a good chance that you're going to get a bit of crap in there anyway but there are a few little things that you can do to uh, yeah, eliminate or at least uh, lower the dust count. Little things like putting a bit of water down on the floor, obviously being careful of any electrical hazards so you don't want to go and uh, run your power leads through the water that you've put on the floor electrocute yourself for the sake of painting a bumper bar um, but anyway so all the prep work has been done in the previous video as I mentioned before I finished the prep work off with uh, 800 grit um, and then we did a little bit of a grey scotch prior over where we're going to be doing our uh, clear blend um, mixing the colour up that's something that I'm lucky enough to have a access to a colour mixing machine however if you were to do this at home and you didn't have any base coat colour I would recommend taking the car down to an auto paint supplier and actually get the colour matched to your car because over time and depending on the paint system they have their variant may vary a little bit to the uh, colour that you have on your car and over time uh, paint does fade and it can change a little bit so it's pretty important to make sure you get a nice match um, and anyway, the, the gun that I'm using here, ideal for the purpose, is just a mini gun. This gun was actually the winner. Uh, it took out top spot in my top eight mini spray guns review. A few reasons behind that. Well, build quality is pretty damn good, and price. Price was really what won it, I think. Uh, you can pick this gun up for $150, so uh, it definitely punches above its weight for a $150 spray gun. Um, I use it daily. It's my go-to mini gun, and yeah, perfect for this kind of thing. I don't usually go and paint full panels with it, but for a spot up on a bumper bar like this, ideal. Um, anyway, that was it for the base coat stage. Uh, just sort of two and a half coats is all you usually need, especially on a black. Two coats is probably even enough for a black color. Um, if you're using waterborne paint, the methods may uh, vary a little bit. I do have uh, other videos on painting waterborne paint, so if you would like to go and check through some of my other videos, um, and obviously I edited out the flash off times if you're at home you could possibly use a heat gun although I would be careful of using a heat gun when you're doing your paint stage because they blow a lot of air onto the panel they can then suck if you've got a little bit of dust in the workshop or in your, your garage you can uh, suck all that dust through the back of the um, heat gun and that can end up landing on your panels and sometimes best off just letting it uh, dry by itself um, yeah, so I'm lucky enough to have a heated spray booth, so usually by the time I put my base coat colour down, I go out, mix the clear up, put it in the gun, I'm right to clear. But it is pretty important to make sure that that base coat is dry before you do go and put your clear coat on. So I was just using the Segola gun here, 
not a bad little minigun, pretty happy with it. Again, it's got the 1.2, same uh, size fluid tip as what I've got on the ANI. Um, and same with this uh, minigun here too. I think this one took out third spot. So this is a pretty damn mean minigun. Like, it's very precise and I've found it's absolutely perfect for my fade out thinner, which is what I'm doing here. So a lot of people ask me about, oh, how do you do your blends and your fade outs? It's really quite simple. Um, you scotch bright up to the edge. You obviously polish before you scotch bright, which we went through in stage one or the first video. Um, and then you just puff the uh, fade out thinner over the edge. And as you can see there, it doesn't look quite perfect quite yet. Um, but we'll then give this a bake, leave it overnight, and then we'll polish it up. And uh, Bob's your uncle, and we've got, us, we've got ourselves a nice looking bumper bar. So this is prior to the polish stage, um, and we're going to do a couple of D-nibs. A few little bits of dust usually land in your paintwork, depending on uh, the kind of shop you're working in. Or as I say, if you're working in your garage, you're probably going to have quite a few. So get yourself some 2000 grit. I've found that's all you need. You don't need to go and get all fancy with, uh, you know, the 3,000 or 4,000 really expensive uh, Trizacs and that. Um, as long as you take a little bit of time with the polishing stage itself, you shouldn't have too many issues removing 2,000 grit sanding scratches. Um, so, yeah, just finding any of your, um, your D-nibs or your, your high spots, you can usually feel them with your hand and they'll sort of make a little bit of an in you'll be able to feel it with your hand and then just give it a bit of a denib back and off you go um yeah so it's good to use uh your 2000 grit wet they're called wet or dry but i recommend doing it wet uh for your polishing stage especially if the paint is a little bit on the fresh side so um if you are doing this at home maybe just uh finish painting the job Put it out in the sun for a couple of days if you can if you're obviously not going to have access to a spray booth with a bake cycle um, and most of the time i would say not to sand the blend section itself where we did that clear blend where we put that fade out thinner over the edge however sometimes you need to um, but yeah i've actually got myself a mini buff that i made myself i just got a drill from bunnings warehouse a local uh, hardware store around here in Australia, got myself a drill and I had to get uh, the correct fitting to go into the drill, get myself a pad to go onto that and uh, got myself a cheap little mini buff. Um, obviously you do have to be careful when you're polishing because uh, you need to generate a bit of heat with that compound. If you just wave the thing over there, it might look polished, you'll get it out in the sun and you'll see all those spots that you've sanded, there'll be still sanding scratches there. Um, so you do need to generate a bit of heat, but if you go too far, you're going to burn that paint and then you're going to cut through and then you're going to be back to stage one and you're going to have to do your paint work again. So, um, yeah, just exercise a bit of caution when you are doing your polishing stage. I'm lucky enough to actually have a guy to do all my polishing for me. Well, 99% of it anyway, in an instance like this, when it's a blend, uh, they are prone to people cutting through. So I do sometimes opt to do my own blends. And as you'll see here, you can barely see it, you know. Uh, the the runs and the damage in the previous paint was probably worse than my blend. Uh, you can probably just see there's like a bit of a run coming up from that uh, headlight washer. And it's not our problem. It's not what the car was here for. The car was here to fix the big section of flaky paint around near the wheel arch section. Um, and as for the rest of it around here where I'm polishing now, there's a few chips and scratches, brush touch it. Um, I ended up brush touching it, put a little bit of clear over the top of it as well, like a bit of 2K clear, left it overnight and I'm yeah polishing it out now. That's another option that you've got. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be, the better way to do this job would be obviously to have pulled the bumper bar off, sanded the entire thing down, painted the entire bumper bar, but obviously with that comes extra expenses. Um, and especially people at home, you may just be like looking at your fairly new, nice Mercedes Benz, you know, and say, I don't really want to pull that bumper bar off, you know, I might forget to put one of the screws in or I might stuff the sensors up or something like that because when you're plugging those sensors in you got to make sure you get the right ones or else it, it'll go and be beeping on the left and the right if you get them plugged into the wrong side although they are pretty foolproof it's not overly uh, difficult but um, I would definitely uh, understand why someone wouldn't want to go and start pulling their, their panels off their cars so yeah as I say just working that polish right in as you can see it takes a, a couple of minutes to um you know generate a bit of heat there and just be careful like 
put your hand on the panel. If it starts getting above, say, 60 degrees, you might want to hold off for a bit and um, let it cool down for a, for a couple of minutes and then go over it again. But that's just about uh, finished this video off. Um, as you can see, just a little bit more on the polishing stage and we've gone and got ourselves a fairly reasonable repair. If you guys have got any questions, I'm always, uh, always do my best to get back to any relevant questions and comments and stuff like that. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you got anything out of it. Feedback's always welcome. If you think there's something I missed or something I could add in future videos, I'm always open to feedback. I am just a spray painter trying to make a, a bit of a go at YouTube, so I do my best. Um, especially with a black car, you may find you get a few swirl marks if you just leave it off the buff with your cutting compound. So it can be a good idea to use some swirl remover. As it turns out, we've got a, um, a Roops Bigfoot. So I ended up going over that with some swirl remover with the Roops Bigfoot. And basically that's just like an orbital polisher. It, it's not a great deal different to an orbital sander with and uh, just like a foam black pad you can put on your orbital sander. It'll have basically the same effects as that. Um, because your buff scratches will go around in circles, the orbital goes around in obviously random orbit um, and it will actually remove all of those swirl marks. So that's another option if you don't want to go and spend the $500 on a Roots Bigfoot. Just get a black pad for an orbital sander and you can use that to remove your swirl marks with. Um, but yeah, the polish I'm using there is uh, Juice uh, Super C. Quite a coarse compound, quite a hard cutting compound. It's good, but it is prone to leaving some, uh, yeah, quite grunty swirl marks behind. Um, so it's, yeah, good to have yourself a good swirl remover. So that's about it. We're going to do a quick before and after at the end of this video. I hope you guys got something out of it. And yeah, as I say, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching. And this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye. Yeah.